In systems governed exclusively by gravity, objects farthest away from the center would take the longest to complete an orbit. But in many galaxies, stars on the outside are orbiting at almost the same rate as those in the core. It's almost like a phonograph record. Every part of that record spins around like a solid disk. The stars are going too fast to stay bound to the gravity of the galaxy. They should just fly right off into space. Physicists come up with an explanation. Galaxies sit in a giant halo or ball of invisible dark matter. And it's that extra mass that allows the stars to turn fast all the way out to the galactic rim. Think about actually taking a disk of dough and spinning it to make a pizza. The more you spin it, the more those outer regions go farther and farther away. Eventually, the dough just goes flying everywhere. That's what would happen to a galaxy if it weren't for dark matter. But as you spin pizza dough and you spin it faster and faster, it does hold itself together because there's all this yummy gluten that's, that's acting as a glue. Dark matter is the gluten of our universe. By calculating the mass needed to bind those speeding outer stars to the galaxy, physicists are able to estimate how much visible matter there is compared to dark matter. The results are staggering. All the stuff we thought existed was just maybe 15% of our universe. That's like if you go to a restaurant and realize that the measly 15% tip, you know, <laughs> that's all we are. We're not even the majority substance. We may not be able to see it, but dark matter makes up some 85% of all matter. Wherever we look, we can see its gravity having effects. It glues galaxies like our Milky Way together. And a close look reveals dark matter can also bend light itself. It's called gravitational lensing. A massive object can bend space and time and light must follow the curves of that space and time. Gigantic clumps of any matter create a gravitational lens. Dark matter showed its space warping power in a trick it played with a gigantic explosion in a far off galaxy cluster. Supernova Repsdal was first detected in November of 2014. Supernova Refstall is actually one of my favorite recent results in all of the astronomical literature. That, that result blew me away. So a star explodes, light is emitted in all directions, and some of it makes its way towards the Earth. So far, so good. This is very standard. So the, the flash appears, and then another flash appears. We see it again, and again, and again we see the explosion go off in four parts of the sky. And then a year later, a fifth explosion goes off in a totally different part of the sky. What's going on? Analysis proves that these multiple explosions are the same supernova. But between this one dying star and our telescopes sits a giant mass of dark matter, a huge gravitational lens. What that means is that some of these rays of light will take much longer, more complicated paths through this region of space-time. The dark matter lens turns one supernova into a fireworks display, lasting an entire year. Dark matter affected the trajectory of light from these supernova so much that for some of those trajectories, it added a whole light year it took a whole extra year for light to reach us. Something is very definitely out there, distorting our view of the cosmos. It's a potent clue that dark matter is real. Now, new evidence suggests that without it, we might not exist at all. The cosmos is filled with an unseen substance. Its mass even bends starlight. Gravitational lensing suggests dark matter holds our entire universe together. For decades, this specter of space has haunted us. We've never been able to pin it down. In 2021, an international team ran a virtual experiment 
to try to predict where dark matter should be by letting computers map out where we think it lives. Because we think we know how it behaves, we can model what it should be doing in supercomputer simulations. The team taught the computer how dark matter bends light, then applied computational power to 17,000 unexplored galaxies. The model created a dark matter map. I think a lot of people, when they imagine the universe on the largest scales, think it's sort of boring, everything's uniform. But that's not what we see. What's amazing is that on the larger scales of the universe, we see a very particular pattern. When we zoom out, we see this magnificent structure, this cosmic web that's created by dark matter. The interweaving tendrils of dark matter stretch for thousands of light years across the cosmos. At the junctions, where matter is concentrated, we find galaxies form, illuminating the dark scaffold. If dark matter exists, scientists believe it makes up 85% of the matter in the universe and also controls the remaining 15%, regular matter, like stars, planets, us. If they're right, dark matter played a critical role in actually building the universe we see today. 2021, astronomers using the SkyMapper Observatory in Australia train specialist optics on a dwarf galaxy called Tucana 2. The SkyMapper's filters split up the starlight into a spectrum of wavelengths, revealing some very ancient light. One of the best clocks that we can put on the universe is the progress of chemistry, right? The buildup of more complex elements over time. Stars are nothing if not factories of chemical complexity. They slam uh, particles together and create heavier elements, right, and through a process called fusion. The later the generation of star, the more chemically complex it is. Tucana 2's spectral signature reveals its stars contain very few of these heavy, complex elements. A clue that lets astrophysicists calculate the age of the galaxy. These are very, very old stars from the very early days of the universe when the gas in the universe was not that chemically complex. Tucana 2 might be one of the oldest known structures that we can see in our local universe. It could be as old as 13 billion years, you know, almost as old as the universe itself. This grand old lady of a galaxy is a tiny thing, barely 3,000 stars. And yet, way out on her galactic rim, stars hurtle around at breakneck speed. When you look at the mass of this ultra-faint dwarf galaxy, it only has a few thousand times the mass of the sun. That's really small. And at the speed it's moving, it should fly apart. Tucana 2 doesn't break up because it's glued together, apparently by an incredible amount of dark matter. When you look at a galaxy like our Milky Way, it's about 85% dark matter, which is a lot. But with Tucana 2, it's more like 99%. Tucana 2 is old, among the oldest galaxies in the universe, and it is packed full of dark matter. Simulations suggest this dark matter played a key role in shaping Tucana 2 and other very early galaxies right from the beginning, gathering regular matter into clumps and building the first galaxies. The importance of dark matter really can't be overstated. It has actually controlled the way matter has evolved since the beginning of the universe. It brings matter together. You need this underlying structure of dark matter to make it all happen. Scientists think that for billions of years, as the early universe grew, dark matter called the shots. Without its gravity, structures like the Milky Way wouldn't have formed. We've seen dark matter's light bending effects. We've even deduced where it should be. Dark matter really does appear to exist. But this evidence is indirect, circumstantial. 
to get conclusive proof that dark matter exists. Don't we need to find some? If we could find a lump of dark matter, <laughs> um, that would be one of the greatest discoveries in all of nature, in all of, in all of our history, right? Because we, we would understand one of the most fundamental components for how our universe works. Drop in the title, they love that. It's time to hunt for dark matter itself. Could it be hiding in the darkest place of all? Black holes.